Welcome back to another Lord Duckman production. Eleanor's door handles. Yes, I get asked about these quite often. How did I make the early style ice pick door handle work with a later style mechanism? This video might answer some of your questions for those looking to customize their late model beetles with earlier parts. Well, in short, Eleanor's doors were rotten pretty badly. The outer skin is mostly missing from the one and the other had a bottom that was hopelessly trashed. The doors had good tops, however, and being budget-minded, I didn't want to buy an expensive set of 1956 doors only to cut them up. Instead, I grafted the original door tops onto some late model doors that I already had. These later model doors someone had shaved the handles off of already and did a fair job cleaning up the rust in them, so yeah, I didn't tamper with some good stock doors, rather I customized someone else's bodge job. As you may have expected, I cut everything down to match the lowered roof profile and then grafted in the single hole section where the ice pick door handle should live. With this, the stock handle location lines up very well with the later model door mechanism. Very little needed to be done here except bend outwards the little tab on the mechanism so that it properly meshed with the door handle inside. After that, everything worked just fine for the last few years until a couple weeks ago. It had been getting harder and harder to open the door, it required pulling the handle a couple of times and maybe it would open. Now it's worsened to the point that it requires additional flapping of the handle, and that's not right. So it's time to investigate this problem deeper. Welcome back to Lord Duckman's Garage. We're here today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor, and we are having a problem with the door handle. It doesn't want to open always. This is something I keep saying that I'm going to address in video, and I've yet to do it. Well, that's what we're going to do exactly in this video. All copyrighted music set aside, I actually have two different neighbors right now playing their copyrighted music kind of loud. <laughs> different songs, not in sync. It's terrible. And it seems like every time I come out here to record, it's just the way it's to be. And that's why I run background music to try to drown that stuff out. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna work on this thing today. This flappiness that's here, I don't know what its problem is, or why it keeps doing it. So we're gonna open that up and we're gonna investigate. So as always, you guys, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Duck Shit for all my different social media links. And we'll be back right after that intro. And then, of course, that idiot has to rev up his truck when he sees me recording on camera. I can't wait to move, guys. <laughs> can't wait to move. I need to truly be a lord of my own domain. And here, I can't do that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. back and thanks for sticking with us these door handles come apart pretty easy it's just a couple of Phillips head screws on the inside of the door here and this is the wrong screwdriver oh man Let's try a slightly smaller one which I brought with me here this seals a little chewed up as you know I've had fitment issues with this seal so I'm probably gonna wind up replacing it well, not probably, I am. I was gonna like glue it, patch it, and fix it. And I'm realizing the seal's kind of old anyway. It's just not gonna get any better than what it is. But let's see, this handle should extract. Well, that's the dairy. <laughs> Come on. There it goes. All right, and she's out. This handle was never meant to be. This door is a conglomeration of both late model and early model parts. This whole mechanism that you see inside of here is all late model stuff. These parts never were supposed to mesh together. Similar as they were, they were still never intended to work together, which is one of the reasons why we're having some issues. All right, now how this handle works is when you pull that, you can actually see the little, uh, I don't know what it is, I guess it's the other side of a lever. It's got a, a tap it on it, if you will. That pushes against this little guy here inside the door. and pushing it by hand, it opens every time. What I suspect may have happened is that this little guy in here bent. It's only attached on one side, so it's just like a flappy piece. And this is one of the things that I had to do to modify this door to make it work properly with this door handle. So, we're going to um, bend this sucker up a little bit here. Now we're gonna screw the handle back in and we're gonna see if it works. Now, progressively this thing has gotten worse, so I'm suspecting that thing has gradually bent further and further away from the handle, and that's why I got a beat on it until now it's at the very extreme. But that's working fine without the handle. 
So that's probably what's wrong. All right, well, let's pull that mechanism apart next. Yeah, let's see if I can actually pull it out from here. Ooh, that metal's actually more soft than I thought it was gonna be. That's not good. Yeah, if it's that soft, then that's probably what's going on, just like I guessed. All right, let's put that handle back in there and see what happens now. That's interesting. Now it's worse. Yeah, it's actually worse. Looking down inside the door, it appears that this, um, Boy, this is a watertight fit. When I filed out this opening, I made it real snug. It appears it's just not pushing on it quite enough, that it needs just a little bit more. And yeah, as I'm pushing it right now, I can feel it bending in. It's actually giving way. Okay, this is like a, a spring. So it's absorbing the cushion from that handle when I'm pushing on this it's absorbing the force like a cushion so rather than pushing in the whole mechanism it's just that little flappy piece is moving okay well that's gonna break off in time so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to open this thing up we're gonna have to weld and reinforce it and hopefully we get it right on the first try there's no real measurement on this I'm gonna wing it and say it's probably supposed to be right about there okay let's take that apart now you guys this is custom car stuff Whenever you start putting things together that aren't supposed to be, you run into some little quirks and problems along the way. And what's really strange about this stuff is that a lot of the stuff was working just fine before we put it to paint. Now paint shouldn't have changed the clearances and tolerances and all that stuff on it that much. But this is one of those things that I probably should have worked out prior to sending it off to Earl. That's cool. Get out of here. There it is. Alright, this whole mechanism should come out of the door. May have to switch sides here. There you go. Give you guys a better angle. You should go in the door. Alright, here's the mechanism. Let me show you what we got. It also gives me an opportunity to look at the door with the seal and see if it's the mechanism that's hanging it up or if it's the seal itself. Yeah, it's the seal. Yep, still won't close all the way. Alright, well we'll get to that. Anyway, this is the mechanism. This is where the handle comes into uh, to play. It actually pushes. You can see it. Boy, this is hard to do with one hand. There you go. That's how the door handle works. And it pushes on this little piece here. And this is the problem. As it's pushing on this, it gives way. You see it just bent a little bit. And what's funny is it's just enough to make a difference on this thing when it's actually in service. So what I think I need to do is I need to put a piece of metal inside of here between these two pieces and just kind of weld it in there. And that will stop it from bending. That will most likely fix the issue. Mechanism's a little, uh, a little worse for wear. Got an awful lot of cat piss on it, that's why it looks a little white and chalky, but no rust to speak of. It still has its uh, zinc coating on it that I can see, and that's one of the reasons why it turned white. But anyway, we'll lube this thing back up before we put it back in. But what's important is that the outside looks good and that the thing does work. And I believe this is an OEM Volkswagen part as well. So I like to keep OEM stuff wherever I can. Let's go ahead and get that welded in here and then we'll see what happens next. Two very boring minutes later. All right, nothing too fancy on there. I just put a little piece of sheet metal in there and I just tacked it in. That way it's easy to get out in case I need to make an adjustment on it in case it's wrong. Let's go ahead and throw this up inside of here and see how this all works now. 
which I hope is gonna be just fine. If not, we'll, we'll make an adjustment. All right. Back up and here she goes. seal back in Interesting, you had a rubber seal on it a minute ago, it's gone now. I'm gonna have to find that. Anyway, I have no idea where that rubber seal went. It's gotta be right here. I mean, I just handled it to go any further than that. I even looked down inside the door, I don't see it in there either. But anyway, let's just go ahead and put the handle on as is without the seal. And we'll come back to the seal when we find it. It's gonna rain soon. Well, more quickly, it's gonna get dark soon. But it's gonna rain tomorrow. And this is the time of year where we get those cold mist rains. See how this does. Oh shit! That's not right. <laughs> oh, it's not popping anyway. Okay. Well, I guess I didn't bend it enough. That answers that question. All right. Well, we're gonna modify it one more time, and that's why I only tack welded it on one side, so I have room to bend it still. All right. Yeah, you can see by the tack weld there that there's a bit of an air gap now between the two pieces that I put in. So I stood it up on purpose, give it a little more height. Let's see if that does the trick. Let me put this thing together. If not, I'm gonna cut it, stand it up a little higher. <laughs> All right, here we go. Put this sucker back in here, head it backwards. if I take the handle out. <laughs> it was preventing it from going in. How about that? It's interesting because now when I put the handle on, I feel the mechanism actually pushing back against the handle just a little bit. That might be good for it though. We're about to find out. Right, goes up, the handle work. Oh, that's what it's supposed to do. We might have this fixed. Oh, actually, it feels better. That's what it needed. Before it felt very squishy. Yeah. Okay, well, that's perfect. We'll pull the mechanism apart. We're gonna finish up the welds. And then we're gonna call this side fixed. I probably should do the same thing to the passenger side, although while I'm not experiencing that problem now, I probably will in time. I also need to find that rubber seal that I lost, so I'm gonna have to reorder a new one. Fun stuff, yay, what a day. Glad I made so much progress on this so quickly, actually. Custom cars, man, when it comes to custom cars, you never know what you're gonna run into. I thank you for your patience watching this stuff because I don't know some people it's not interesting other people they just they love it love to see things that you know aren't supposed to work working case in point with this door handle here all these different parts from these different years of cars okay and out she comes Finish up that weld up 
inside of here. Or at least tacking in a couple more spots. It's not that structural strength, it's just compression strength. So I don't think it's gonna fall apart, but anyway, we'll fix that up. All right, one more thing that I'd like to discuss here. Let's go ahead and close the door. That's the door closed. On the inside, remember the little push-pull that you have, the little uh, lock tab that's on the back of a door on a late model Beetle? That's what this mechanism here does. So you push it down on the lock, it pushes down on this here, and now the door is locked. You notice how it doesn't open. As if I pull up on the plastic, now the door opens. Inside of it is also, we'll close the door again, is this little guy here, and this is what the little handle, the little flipper on the inside opens. So when you pull on that, it opens the door. So what I need to do, because this is a early model um, horn-shaped handles that are on the inside, used to, you used to be able to flip the handle forward to lock it using an earlier mechanism. This mechanism is not set up for that. So what I'm going to do is come up with a linkage that ties these two points together to the handle that allows things to function. And it's going to be a bit of an experiment, but I think I know what I'm doing here. But I'll, uh, I'll draw it up and then I'll attempt to build it before I ever even reveal it to the public because everybody's going to think I'm friggin' nuts and I need to do it their way. But no, we're going to do it my way. But anyway, that's how that mechanism works on the inside here. I need to figure all that stuff out. It's something that's coming up in the, probably the next coming weeks. I'd like to be able to have an internal door handle sometime soon. It's been baby steps on this car. A little bit at a time. A lot of the stuff is just little things like this. You know, stuff that just, it needs to work right. You don't realize just how important it is until it doesn't work. You know, like a door handle. It's kind of a huge problem. <laughs> it's kind of a huge little problem, if you will. But anyway, all right, let's put this thing in. Boy, they even blast the commercials on the radio across the street. <laughs> Let's turn it up for the commercials too, gee! Yeah, because commercials sound so great. I don't know, people live in a different, different mental world than I do. Different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're of a different status than I am. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. And then this rubber needs to be squeegeed in there. All right. Now I'm gonna make a quick look for that door seal. If I find it, great. If I don't, I'm just gonna order another one. Damn thing be missing. That's just, yeah, I don't know. That's... There we go. Well, it just occurred to me, at one point I did have the ice pick door handle in my pocket, so that's where the seal was. <laughs> I never even lost it. It was actually on my person the whole while. Unbelievable. Anyway, <laughs> this can go back on now. Come on, Sealy. Come on, Sealbert. There we go. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I can't believe it was in my pocket. Well, you know what? I can't believe it. That's the kind of stuff that that just gets me. <laughs> okay, one more screw right in there. Now, with everything screwed in properly, and the seal as properly installed as it's gonna be for this piece of shit, <laughs> let's see if it works. First that. Yeah, it seems to be working. Okay, here we go. That's what it's supposed to do. You know, it actually does look like it's closing a little better, too. I don't think that should be because of the latch. It might just be because I tucked the seal differently. Well, good. We now have a working door handle, and that feels feels better than it ever did. So it used to be kind of squishy when it would start pushing into it. You know, when you pull the handle and you start to feel resistance, it, this is solid. Before it was mush and then pop. Now it's solid pop. All right, I trust that. That's good. One more thing fixed. All right, on the passenger side, yeah, this one has that mushy feeling, but it does open just fine, though. 
Well, I am going to take that one apart. I am going to do the work on it, but because this one seems to be working fine as is, I'm going to leave it alone for today. And when I get done building the internal door handle mechanism with the long rod that goes to the back and I make all this stuff work, that's when I'll take this apart and I'll do the mod on it. Otherwise, I think this one's good. We're just going to leave it. Well, my Eleanor. A lot of people have been asking questions about running boards. Yes, there are running boards coming. Um, I'm going to be designing them myself. I want something that's super wide that comes way out. Stock ones just aren't gonna cut it on here, but I want them to look stock. The idea is to have it look like something that came out of the Volkswagen uh, showroom floor from 1956. So I'll be doing the best that I can to make super wide running boards that looked period correct for this particular car. So I'll be coming up with something. I don't know what exactly yet, but I'll do it in time. It's not a high priority item, not at all. I want to get this thing together so I can drive it. Running boards clearly are not important for that. Also, some clever, some clever-eyed people noticed that the wheels aren't quite gapped the same on the fenders. You see how this is just about even with the fender, nice and flush. Whereas over here we have a bit of a tuck. You see that? The reason for that is, is because it's everything to do with the engine. When I put those intake manifolds on, uh, it rubs really bad on that side. Only a little bit on this side. But the engine is actually a little raised up over there and the body is not installed straight on the chassis just for that reason. The body is just a little out of whack. I did that on purpose, otherwise I was not going to get the engine in for the show. And you can actually see, if you look closely, the gap between the uh, engine compartment and the tins on that side is real tight. And over on this side it's much wider. And that's because the whole engine is thrown to the left and the entire body is actually thrown right. So that's the reason for that. Uh, once I pull those intake manifolds out and I redesign a little bit of the engine compartment in here, yeah, it's gonna need some changes. Then I'll center up the body and I'll get it bolted down properly. So yeah, I'm not happy with the way it sits, but only a few people noticed that, which is what's surprising. Nobody noticed it at the show. So yeah, I guess that's what's important. <laughs> but yeah, it does bug me. That wheel, it almost sticks out just a little bit. It's not quite flush even, it's, it's just, Barely. It's a little bit sticking out down there. The only reason it goes in at all is because the wheels camber just a bit. Ugh. And that's something I gotta sort out. Uh, I'm gonna do some glass cutting soon, too. I'm cutting me a windshield. That's right, you guys. I have a 69 Beetle windshield. As you know, they have just a hair of a curve in them, and this windshield was actually built from a 69 Beetle frame. It was all I had available at the time. So that's what I made work, rather than trying to buy expensive parts for an oval. Yeah, I just kind of fixed it and made it work. So it does have a bit of a, a curve in it, and you can kind of see it looking at it that way. You see how it kind of goes whoop? It's very slight, but it does it. And the top does the same thing, so I'm going to have to use a piece of 69 glass. I don't think a piece of flat glass is going to work in there, but I got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of this and that to work with. There was a, a little problem that Earl and I had discovered, and Earl hasn't revealed it to the world because he didn't want to embarrass me, but the entire car was built quite well, but this corner was off by a quarter of an inch. Even though I built most of the car with, uh, with uh, T-squares and, <laughs> and building squares, and you know, I just clamped stuff on wherever I could and eyeballed the rest of it, he said I did a pretty damn good job, but right over there, there's a little bit of fill right on that corner. So that might cause the windshield to fit a little weird. It's one of those things that uh, I'll you know, pretty much cross that bridge when I get to it. But what that might mean is that I might just stick a pop-out windshield or something in there instead, because that will fill up the gaps because it won't need to sit in quite the same stock location. It can actually float in, in space and I can adjust the hinges and make it work. So I don't know, we'll see. It's one of those little secrets that I wasn't gonna reveal until it was time, but yeah, there was a little mistake right there that I had made. Just off by a little tiny bit. Earl spotted it, I didn't even see it, but once he pointed it out to me, and technically you had to get up on a ladder to look straight down at the car to see it from the front, you didn't. But when he climbed up on a ladder, I looked down, he saw it right away. But Earl's got the good eye for that stuff. Anyway, that's where we're at. I guess we're gonna wrap this thing up because the sun's about to go down, and that means it's gonna get dark and rain for the next few days, so I'm probably not gonna get any good recording done. So we'll just have to take it as she comes. So thanks for watching, everybody. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. And uh, hopefully we'll be back. We got a big pile of mail. I'm going to see if I could meet up with B sometime this week so we can get a mail call up. Uh, last week there was a loud mariachi band playing across the street, so we couldn't do any recording at all. It was just ridiculous. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I could tell it was a band because they played for about four hours and they kept skipping beats and missing notes and the singer was just terrible. You know what? I should have recorded it. I should have recorded it just for you guys. I'm sure they'll be back there again. Anyway, we're done. I digress. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.